Hello there. Tony has awakened, ladies and gentlemen. He has been given a second chance in life. What's going on? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law enforcement. He's seen your show absolutely shooting his shot. And today, we are up to episode 4 of The Sopranos Season 6. I cannot wait to get into this episode after episode 3. I'm recording these in back-to-back -back, um, sessions right here. And I, I always do this with this show. Sometimes it ends up being a triple recording, quadruple recording. I just get addicted. I go out on a tangent and I keep recording. But yeah. We're going to get into the reaction. We're going to waste no more time with this thing. We're going to absolutely smash it and let's have some fun. Let's go. This one's titled The Fleshy Part of the Thigh. <laughs> Yo, who's cosplaying? Pest control. <laughs> I'll be as fast as I can. Jesus Christ. I'll never get used to seeing that. Well, not too much longer. Got you scheduled for surgery tomorrow. Finally close you up. More surgery? It's a good sign. Dr. Plepper doesn't think he'll need access anymore. My own uncle puts me through this. New gunshot. Rapper. Deluxe. He's hot. Got shot seven times coming out of a club. Damn! He still got all his pancreas, though. You got the 50 cent treatment. Well done. That was a deluxe shooting. Look, I've been feeling... I don't know. Not myself. Since I woke up from the coma. Alzheimer's? My thoughts keep running away with me. These feelings, they'll pass. It's very common in post-surgical patients. Maybe you'd like to talk to someone. Social worker? Hey, babe, how you feeling? Oh, good. Good. Mm -hmm. That candy striper out there, there's not much of a selection. It was something on Sink the Bismarck, but half the pages were gone. But you like dinosaurs? He's almost getting treated like I a kid here. <laughs> Should have closed me up. We're sad to hear you're selling the company. I've been going over the books. We're paying an Anthony Soprano second highest salary in the company. <laughs> He's a consultant. Where do I reach him? I want to make some changes, but his office is full of junk. There's a 55 horse Johnson outboard on the desk. Looks like nobody's ever there. He's in the hospital. You should talk to his colleague, Mr. Galtieri. <laughs> oh, Tony Soprano, of course. I knew him when I was a kid. He was a friend of the family. I'm having surgery tomorrow. I'm not supposed to eat. You fucking believe this? Well, we shouldn't. So anyway, she was crying the entire night, and I didn't get any sleep. Why don't you ride in the fucking Zephyrs and sleep on a cloud? What? You think I put that up there? I didn't. Right. Who did? Who There's did? a mystery behind it. <laughs> Or you got a little choo-choo train at home, huh? Takes your toast right from the kitchen, delivers it to your bedroom. Look, Tom, I'm sorry about what happened with Junior in the shooting, but don't mention Junior to me ever again. He's dead to me. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Bobby. You can't hide behind this brother-in-law shit forever. You're an okay guy. But each and every man is judged on his own merit. Have you heard the good news? Jesus Christ! That's right. Aaron Arkaway, Jan's friend. Oh no, not this guy again. Oh yeah, right. We're protesting downstairs, and I saw Jan in the elevator this morning. She told me you were up here. So that's what all that uh, yelling and singing is. What happened to just family? <laughs> Pharmacy was fired for refusing to fill birth control prescriptions. Well, I got all this covered, you know, with my parish priest. That's great, but what God wants is for you to love him directly. Not necessarily through the intercession of liturgy or any human agent. Is this Aaron Arkaway? Hey. What are you fellas doing here? Mrs. Soprano. Uh-huh. We were just dialoguing with your husband. We were about to pray. They were. You're having surgery. <laughs> you know, they've done clinical studies about the power of prayer. Prayed for patients have 11% fewer complications. I have read that. It does help to pray. I mean, even if it just takes your mind off it. 
dear Jesus, hear these words and bestow your loving, healing grace upon our injured friend. Lord, help heal his wounds and help him with your cleansing love. Mercy abounds. Grace abounds even more. Amen. 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 Pick up Jesus. No one's saying anything against Viagra. Birth control, and namely the morning after pill, is a sin because it strikes at life, at the unborn. Hey, but what if somebody goes after Viagra? <laughs> I'm not talking about procreation. And listen up, because this affects you too. Something like Viagra <laughs> will never be an issue. Excuse me, but uh, at one time they were going after booze. And as a proprietor of a drinking and eating establishment, I take this stuff very seriously. Strip club, I believe it is. Oh, you've been to the big one? No. <laughs> thank you so much for coming, Pastor and Aaron. And thank you so much for your prayer. Sure. Oh, yeah, really, I, I really appreciate it. Bye, guys. Praise God. Oh, my God. What is it, Doctor? I just found Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> you motherfucker. In Montana, the fossilized remains of a Suck your mother. Rex yielded soft tissue that indicated a definite link between dinosaurs and modern birds. Look who I got here. Oh, the Sanitation Prince. <laughs> Hi, Tony. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Thank you. Why does he look like sorry, Paul Rudd? Father and I were very close. Me, you, your dad, and Paulie here. Oh, yeah. Kingman was just back from the Cubs. Mookie Wilson hit that foul tip, being that guy in the low. <laughs> I just gotta get to the office. Finn's picking me up. I'll be back later. Sweetheart, thank you for everything. Look at that professional I'm office attire. <laughs> she wants to be a doctor. Also considering law. A law doctor. So, you're living in uh, Deer Valley? Yeah, ski instructor. So, uh... Paulie tells me you're thinking of selling your father's business to Chucky Cinelli. Yeah, I think it's the best thing for Mom. And of course, Tony, there'd be a severance package for you. <laughs> Jason, I don't think you should sell the business right now. There's a lot of potential buyers out there. Let me get out of the hospital, run the numbers, get you the best price. No, Cinelli's offer seemed fair. There's lots of things to take into account. You even know what your habit is? My what? Earnings before interest. Taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Gives a true picture of a company's profitability. Jason, you let me handle this. I don't want to see you get hurt. The cotton business is a different corporate culture. <laughs> You're tired, T. We'll leave. Come on. All right. Bye, Tony. Is that nuns cutting the grass? We're afraid she doesn't have long left. I'm surprised she didn't call Ma. Well, she asked specifically to see you. Get you some pinolis and a new pair of those speedo skin divers sacks you like. Look at those. The treads are all gone. You'll slip on the linoleum again. Then we're out. Paul, oh, <laughs> Just a sec. Sister, please, give me a hand here. Put these on my head, will you? Paulie, you should know. Speak up, Aunt I, I was... I was a bad girl. How could you be a bad girl? You're a nun. These are too small. No, they ain't. They're supposed to be snug so she don't slip. Put them on. Paulie, <laughs> the war, I was still a novitiate. I was helping out at the USO, and, and there was... There was this soldier, Russ, and he, he was so lonely. Aunt Daddy, if this is going where I think, maybe you should talk to a priest. <laughs> I got pregnant. Oh! A baby. a baby. Listen to her. The Alzheimer's is getting to her. You didn't have no baby. I did. I did have a baby. Paulie. It was you. Get my son. But. But Ma. Maria Lucia is your aunt. I'm your Ma. Whoa, what are these secrets coming out on the deathbed? The revelations here. Girl. 
And I ain't talking about the Bible scriptures. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, Paulie. <laughs> Wait, and that is Paulie's ma. And the, the person who Paulie's been saying ma all her life is his aunt. And because she went into, oh, she used like the nun thing as like an undercover. Nah, that's crazy. That's that's just like the weirdest revelation. That came out of nowhere like Randy Orton, man. Giving an RKO out to KSI the other week on SmackDown. But like, what? Nah, like that's, <laughs> that's crazy. It could be the Alzheimer's and it could be a situation of like, remember uh, uh, Uncle June saying the same thing about Tony with like, um him forgetting who he, like, uh, calling him his father's name, um, talking about the 40 grand he had in the house, um, from, like, one of the hits he did, um, so it could be that, it could be a situation of that, or just, it could be true, you never know. Good afternoon, Mr. Soprano, how are you doing? I don't know. I am. I'm glad to hear that. Holy moly. Where have they been keeping you? <laughs> the doctors around here, it's like the United Colors of Bennington. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm a utilization review specialist. I represent your insurance carrier. It's my job, together with your physicians, to see how fast we can get you out of this place and back home. You know what? Lucky she wasn't around when all the boys were around in the hospital because they would have been all over. <laughs> this is good. They've closed your incision and your ambulatory now, and I see they've got the Foley out. You want to kick me out of here? Well, a hospital stay costs a lot of money. My bowels don't work. I'm in pain. I just got operated on, for Christ's sake. Well, uh, perhaps your bowels would be working better if you hadn't tried to eat the sausage sandwich on 328. No, I don't believe this. With all the money I've been contributing over the years, you want to put me in the street. <laughs> Look, you, you, you think we're the enemy, but if you hadn't had insurance, you would have ended up at the county hospital. It's a good thing that you had your card with you when they performed the wallet biopsy. The what? In the ambulance. If you hadn't had your card with you, they would have dropped your butt at Martin Luther King. The wallet biopsy. Get out of my room, you sick cunt. Whoa, 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 what's with the attitude? What's with the... Is the medical system this effed in the USA? Like, come on. Why do all the nurses and doctors look like they came out... Like, not look like, but what? They, they treat everyone like they came out of the Mordor or something. Can you see it for a minute, Tom? Hey, I'm winded. The FBI, the doctors? He says he's downhearted. I tried to explain to him there's an upside to everything. Yeah, man. I know it's a difficult struggle, but let's lead with some good news for a change. Yeah. Armageddon CD is now charting number five. <laughs> Deluxe. <laughs> it's come at a better time. Yeah, but it really hurts. Sure it does, baby boy. Sure it does. But check it. Seven caps. Tupac ain't getting <laughs> Fiddy, he only got two more. Hey, Fiddy got nine, man. Helping considerably with the street cred, which, as you know, has always been something of a problem. Deluxe got shot by the ops, man. Go lose my thumb. Special hand surgeon coming in. <laughs> Come on, man. You're gonna be all right, Lux. <laughs> don't put on that face. It don't make me weak. Keep your eyes to yourself, you sexy freak. <laughs> <laughs> Pen a pad in the self, hospital. Bitch, I'm on a murder street. <laughs> I don't wanna ask, you know what I mean? You're writing a song, huh? I always wondered how it was done. Like this here. Are you a rap star? My son would know. The Lux gonna produce my album. Then he gets shot. Make him gangster number one. It's like he losing focus on my shit. My son says he's more popular than ever because of it. What I know is I ain't gonna have no major release this year. <laughs> it's crazy. The situation with the Lux, the boss getting shot, the one who's the main star getting shot, and then that, that affects all those under him, per se, similar to the Tony situation, all those under him were affected, and they start, you know, not caring for the well-being much of the boss, but how the operation's going, he's like, damn, Deluxe was gonna co-produce, or like, he was gonna produce my album this year, and it's like, he's not even caring for Deluxe, he's just doing the bars, and he's thinking all about himself, it's the selfishness again, which plagues Tony's crew. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be so interesting. Holy! I won $40 at Kino! Yeah! <laughs> Ow! Is there something you want to tell me about? What? I just saw Rantati. And guess what? 
Turns out she's not my aunt. Turns out she's my mother. No, that's not true. Don't bullshit me. You've been bullshit me my entire life. Holy. It's true, isn't it? Isn't it? Wow. That reaction says it all. Son of a bitch. Oh, how I dreaded this day. I gave you everything. I gave you a son's love. No. Oh. The false pretense. No. You're a fraud and a phony. And she's even worse. She's a whore. My mother's a fucking whore. Don't say that. She was a young girl. She wanted to be a nun, but she got in trouble. And you helped her out. Cooked up this little scheme. Forget who gets victimized. I loved you. I always loved you. Holly! Oh, this is massive. This is come... Like I said, it's crazy. It's coming out of nowhere. It's like... Holly just got Darth vader and looked. Literally, Aunt Dottie said, no, I am your mother. Like, that's what happened. Like, this is Empire Strikes Back, but on poorly. What the heck? It's, it's so left field. It's come out of nowhere. And this is going to affect poorly, like, in different ways you cannot imagine, probably. This is a major bombshell. There he is. I've been thinking about your problem. Maybe it would help you if you got shot. What the fuck are you talking about? Got shot. Make you more popular too. You know, raise your profile with X lax Something easy. The fleshy part of the thigh. <laughs> I'm a marksman. He's a crazy motherfucker. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Men's health, <laughs> Vito. <laughs> so Silvio is just asthma acting up ever Excuse since he became me. acting boss. Hi. You're a friend of Anthony's. I was just about to visit him. How's he doing? He's in a lot better shape than those fucking nuns you got up there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Put away such men. Between father and son, there is a bridge which neither time nor hey, death can shake. Hey, I got fully a taro downstairs. The show. Finally. Used to watch it all the time when I was a little kid. What about it? The bridge of which I speak, Grasshopper. Oh! Where the fuck you going? Sorry, He's too frustrated at the moment. <laughs> Thank you for giving my kid that CD. Tony Soprano. Original G. <laughs> come by my joint later on tonight. <laughs> Going to have a fight on satellite. So is that deluxe? <laughs> he got his... Are you trying to poach my company? Thank you. I was literally about to say, I talked about it last episode. Like, New York, none of New York has done the due diligence or even courtesy to come and see Tony. Or even give a call. Like Tony, you've been in a coma. So that gives you carte blanche? Huh? It's that fucking John. He's sitting in the can. The feds are trying to take everything he's got. He's in a panic state. Right, I'm sensitive to that. But whatever happens to Baron's sanitation, I gotta be kept on. I need that W-2. Now, as you can see, I'm facing a long convalescence here. And Baron is my secondary insurance carrier. I need it. John's gonna take care of you. You know that, Tony. But what you're asking, 25% of the sale price, year's salary till retirement, plus skim? <laughs> Come on. Look. Billy's veneers, on. man. <laughs> I'm not well. So I'll give John a break on the skim. We're getting two G's a week now. How many stops we base that on? Oh. How many stops? Eleven. The fuck you talking about? It's at least twenty-five. Twenty-five. <laughs> Paulie's head's not in at the moment. Yeah. All right, I take the skim on twenty. Fifteen hundred a week. But I stay on a payroll, as is. All I can do is deliver the message, Anthony. That's smirk, Look man. Your ass today. That smile, sorry. What's going on? My aunt Dottie's been sick. Call I got? She just died. Mom just died. Oh. Sorry. You were close. Your mom's sister or your dad's? Mom's. 
She must be broken up, huh? Here we are. This your brother and sister coming in? Yeah. Your aunt. She's the nun. Yeah. Always wondered. They got hair under there. Yeah. Short. Well, maybe you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how, like, in the... Rings they wear. It, it... Are they really married to Jesus? So I understand. <laughs> Paul, he's angry. It's just funny how, like, this episode um, where Tony was talking about Viagra and the Reverend was talking about procreation and that sort of um, how important it is about, you know, um, how important life is to God and how important, how God loves procreation and sort of, um, I don't know, the, the sanctity of life and then obviously you have the impurity of the nun in um and Dottie um who obviously did she betray her oath was she a nun at the time or she was just getting into it or she was about to get into it um and she wasn't celibate going in so yeah it's just very interesting um to have the storyline with tony or like have that conversation with the reverend and then you have sort of like the storyline with paulie and what's going on there This is the guy, the paramedic. Wallet biopsy. Nice, very nice. <laughs> These people are saying I took money from your wallet? Fuck that. Whoa, 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 what'd you say? I was looking for proof of insurance. I was only doing my job. I heard a lot of that at Nuremberg. <clears throat> you owe me 2K. It was gone from my wallet. I don't have that kind of money. One week. Rudy Diaz, or you'll need a paramedic. Damn, what? Oh, nice of you to come by. We'll see you next week, huh? All this activity, Tony, <laughs> are you getting any rest? Absolutely. The guys are just leaving. <laughs> oh, so you two came together. You talking now? Mom apologized to me. What? Good job at Blockbuster. Oh. Good. Well, I'm glad to see you, man. They got Blockbuster, but. Fucker keeps dropping his hands. The boy's getting tired. Oh my gosh, we're getting primetime TV main event in the hospital. 50 G's. Who you play your action with? Pinnacle. Online? What price they give you on Alvarez? 350. Damn, boy. Hold the motherfucker steady. <laughs> so dodgy. My <laughs> friend here give you 375. Hey, Paulie. Wonder what kind of health insurance he's got. <laughs> it's a life of abuse. Yes, well, he is a boxer. <laughs> Everyone's here. This ain't for everybody. This is the biggest private you suite in the think, hospital. You do your uncle a kindness, you get shot for your efforts. You think you got family, but in the end, they fuck you too. <laughs> he's grieving. His aunt just died. I tell you, we each and every one of us are alone in the ring, fighting for our lives. Just like that poor prick. Well, that's one way to look at it. You got a better one? Don't get me started. It's complicated. Think I'm stupid? You're like, it's actually an illusion those two boxes are separate entities. What the fuck? Illusion? The separate entities is simply the way we choose to perceive them. I didn't choose not to. It's, it's physics. Schrodinger's equation. Uh, the boxes, you, me, we're all part of the same quantum field. You have a substitute teacher at Carver Middle School. He's a rocket scientist, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Bell Labs. Oh, oh, Lift it up, nigga. <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> well, think of the two boxes as ocean waves or currents of air. Two tornadoes, say. They appear to be two things, right? Two separate things. But they're not. The tornadoes is just wind. The wind stirred up in different directions. The fact is, nothing is separate. Everything is connected. Everything is everything. Down with that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the universe is just oh, a man. big soup of molecules bumping up against one another. The shapes we see exist only in our own consciousness. Hey, Sean, hey. don't make me come over there. You're so fucking smart. Fix that TV. <laughs> he says there's the issue of his W-2 and health insurance. That selfish prick. <laughs> Everybody's selfish here, at the moment. Facing a shit storm and all he can think about is himself? Don't raise your voice in the visitor's room, man. As far as the sale's concerned, 
That ship has sailed. It's going through. And as a friend, I would appreciate Tony's help. That term friend is used so loosely. Here's what I'm willing to do. Chinelli will retain him as waste management consultant for two years. During that time, he could keep his fucking W-2 and his health insurance. Plus, 5% of the sale price. <laughs> and we lease him a new car. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I told him I need that W-2 in perpetuity. And 5% of the fucking sale price? He thinks because I'm in this freaking condition, he can take advantage where he can go fuck himself. I'm just telling you what Phil told me, Tom. And you tell Jason before he sells, he better understand his obligation. The state of those two individuals, Johnny Sack and Tony at the moment, but the ways they're delivering messages, obviously you cannot have the face-to-face -face at the moment. <laughs> Uh oh, a visit from Patty and Paulie. Double P's, baby. This ain't good. It's all about the sale. It's even with Tony's advice, you seem determined to sell your father's company. There's something you should know. Whatever happens, we gotta be taken care of. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna honor whatever provisions are in the contract. Fuck the contract. <laughs> Tony's given years of his life to that company, and he expects to be duly compensated. Johnny Sack sure as shit ain't gonna perform. Who? Mr. Cinelli's waste management consultant. And since Johnny Sack ain't gonna step up, guess what? It's coming out of your race. You know, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little intimidated. As well you should, my friend. <laughs> man who teaches skiing for a living ought to look after his physical condition, wouldn't you say? His knees. Kid, you wouldn't be in this situation you listen to Tony in the first place. He's looking out for you. He doesn't want to see you get hurt. I got a lot on my mind these days. I don't need this shit. <laughs> Patsy just a passenger man <laughs> he getting by he getting by he's happy with everything he hasn't complained once I think if I give Tony what he wants I lose money on the sale I can't do that to my mom kid you work it out any way you want but nobody's backing out of the deal Mr. Cinelli I'm sorry but the bottom line is I'm not selling the company to you there are other buyers out there Tony was quite clear about that I'll tell you the fucking bottom line laddie buck the Barone routes are now Cinelli routes that's that well Cinelli gonna be Getting paid a visit by somebody. That's all I'm going to say. Hey. That's a little kid, man. Horrible thing. They brought this little girl in. She's got third degree burns on 80% of her body. You wouldn't believe the week I've had. What? There's a little girl burned in there. Jesus Christ. Sorry, T. No. Now, what the fuck is with you? And I want some answers, because you're starting to drive me fucking nuts. This remains between us? Of course. My aunt who died, she wasn't my aunt. She was my mother. <laughs> what? Your aunt, the nun, was your mother? Some cocksucker GI knocked her up during the war. Russ. <laughs> so what was your mother? My ma's my aunt. She adopted me to hide the family shame. Believe this shit? All I did for her. Not only is my ma not my ma, who the fuck even knows who this Russ bastard is? Worst thing, I'm not who I am. It's like my whole life is a joke. A big fucking joke on me. Tienes que regresar para la escuela. No solamente para días de fiesta. Quédate aquí. Oh my gosh, he took his kid to work day and oh man, it's not gonna end well. It's not gonna end well.
it's crazy how as well just the change of in, in, of environment in the show you know changing the scenery obviously because tony getting shot but changing the scenery from the butter being as a main hq or from tony's household as a hq um to where all these meetings are made or vesuvios and i uh, had or vesuvios for instance just changes the complete tone of the show you know it's going to change tony's mindset because he's seeing things in this hospital obviously he's had these dreams but now he's seeing things differently he's seeing a different outlook on life whilst in the hospital he's obviously had the um rapper who's been shot and now he's looking at the girl who's had 80 percent of her body of third with third degree burns and it's going to be interesting how this whole experience is this experience in general changes everyone for the show once everything is out of the hospital. How's the mindset going to change? How a character is going to make decisions now? It's Because a lot's happened to a lot of the characters during this time at the hospital. So it's going to be very interesting to see, especially Tony's outlook, how it's changed. What's going on? This ain't your route no more. It's ours. Chanel. What do you mean? I have this route for five years. Stupid fuck. Fuck this. Oi! Bobby! Yo, Chanelli about to had a shit storm going down his way. <laughs> I went without so you could have the mink coat, the massage chair from Sharper's Image, the flat screen TV, 2,000 bucks for a woman I don't even know. You're on your own. I never want to see you again. <laughs> I told you, it's a different corporate culture. I tried to redefine the deal. <laughs> you shouldn't have made the deal without talking to me in the first place. Well, goddammit, how was I supposed to know? I made it perfectly clear. Give a party of profits. Thanks to you, a man is beaten half to death. Well, his little boy was watching, and it's all over the media. It's not fair. The business belongs to my family. Fair? You, you fucking believe this shit? You remind me of my kid. Talk to the Katrina <laughs> victims about fair. Why don't you talk to Paulie here? He'll tell you about fair. Absolutely. You know you're worse than my son. Get him the fuck out of here. Hey. I want you guys... What, what do you guys think of the whole Paulie situation? Because in the end of the day, like... I know this secret's been... Kept all his life, but still at the same time... She's, 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 she's just as much as your mother as Anne Dotty is. Like, it's just, in the end of the day, she took you in. She raised you your entire life. That She's more of your mom than Anne Dotty was your actual mom. The secret's been kept. Okay, I know it hurts. I know definitely Um, in this period of life, it, it's a bombshell for Paulie. And listen, with his temper, obviously, this is going to affect him madly. Like, knowing who he is, not even knowing who his real father was. It's just some guy from the wall that banged Aunt Dotty. Um, and yeah, it's it obviously, I don't know what, like obviously the conflicting emotions he'd have at the moment is just through the roof. But what are you guys' thoughts on it? Is Paulie overreacting? Um, or is he justified in his reactions here and how disappointed he is? Um, because in that moment right there, I thought we were going to have a situation where, remember he choked out that old lady, he's the friend of his Mars, when she found out, um, you know, she found out he was, you know, under the, under the bed looking for the money under the mattress. Um, I thought she was in that type of danger right there, but I still think Paulie has that respect for her deep down for raising her maybe all her life. He's just really disappointed and sad at the moment and he's throwing his toys out the pram. How was I supposed to know? My family kept me in the dark. What kind of pathetic fucking excuse is that? Don't you communicate? My family kept me in the dark. Baby. Shoot me one time. One time only, you heard? Oh my it's gosh. Style, like you said. It's only 7,000 here. I said eight. Hey, hey, hey. Look, I'll get my little brother to do it for way less. Believe that. 
Trust me, you gotta go outside of the family for something like this. You don't want people knowing. That way you could blame it on Dr. Drupal. <laughs> 7,000 is all I got. The ops, the ops. Okay. I don't want to know when it's coming. You decide. What if he misses? Like... Get this. It says you have the history of the planet was represented by the Empire State Building. The time that human beings have been on Earth would only be a postage stamp at the very top. <laughs> you realize how insignificant that makes us? I don't feel that way. Hey, hey. there he is. Hi, Chris. Hi. Great to see you looking so robust. Pick up Hesh, man. I love Hesh. Beth wanted to come. Yeah, sure. Hi, Tony. Hey. So how's Eli? I hear uh, with the physical therapy that they got him using a walker. He's doing better. Thank you. Hey, Tony. Okay to visit? Yeah, yeah, sure. This guy, I know he's a reverend, uh, and I know he's meant to be the, the token positive Rapkin, Pastor Bob Rapkin. white guy here. But, like, his smile creeps me a little bit. How are you feeling? Physically a little better than I was. So maybe you're right, that prayer business works. <laughs> I brought you something. Born again. Charles Coulson. The Watergate guy. Mm. Friend of mine did time with him. A ruthless, powerful man who thought he was above the law. He committed crimes and then went to prison. And then he found Jesus. And everything changed. I I'm sensing a different... Like I said before, I'm sensing a different... Um, like a different road this season he's going to take. I feel like... I don't know if it's going to delve deep but into more of like a psychological drama than just the drama it's like it's gonna get you pondering questions that the characters ponder because a lot of it seems to be you know talking about life pondering your existence this like that stuff like that so far and i find it interesting here um i don't know david chase's religion and what religion he believed in or if he is religious anyway but i find it um interesting how hesh here a jewish individual is in the presence of a reverend here just you know there's a, been a lot of religious figures or uh, uh, um, uh, representations of different religions in the past three episodes. Became a different man. Yeah, so? <laughs> Look at that. Salvation Hesh. isn't just about I was just talking being about saved that. from hell after you die. It's also about being safe from yourself while you're still alive. <laughs> huh. Dinosaurs. <laughs> kids can't get enough. Yeah, yeah, me too. Ever since I saw King Kong kick their ass. Really <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs too. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh? What? Some people would have you believe dinosaurs existed millions of years ago. It's just not true. What? God created the Earth 6,000 years ago. And I tell my kids, you have to remember, dinosaurs and human beings lived on the Earth at the same time. What, like the Flintstones? So he's debating he's science... Mind. But what, what about all that carbon dating? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. A lot sorry. of scientists would disagree with you. I think you'll find those people all have an agenda, Tony. Evolution, which is Satan's plan to deny God. Evolution and salvation are mutually exclusive. The guy next door's a scientist. think he'd disagree with you big time. <laughs> that man's not saved. Hey, this guy has a different outlook Read on religion here. We'll talk later. Like, I don't know if it's... He's very narrow-minded in his approach. This is not... What's he saying? There were dinosaurs back with Adam and Eve? I guess. No way. T-Rex in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve will be running all the time. <laughs> the Bible says it was paradise. You can disagree with evangelicals, but they're great friends of the Jews. Because Israel is the Holy Land. See? You wait. And again, that's a reference to Jewish people still waiting for the, the, the coming of Christ, the coming of their Savior. You wait. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. The coming of the Messiah. It's just the different competing religions here. I, I can tell David Chase wasn't a fan of religion in general. <laughs> you were talking about tornadoes. You know what the Indians say about the wind? No. They say that sometimes we go around feeling pity for ourselves. But behind our back, a great wind is coming. <laughs> he you said the quote. Part of a much bigger reality. On the post said note. Why are you so interested in all this? 
I was in this coma, and, uh... Look, I don't remember nothing. But before I woke up, I felt like I was being pulled towards something. And I don't want to go back. And my, my wife told me I woke up at one point. I said, uh... Who am I? Where am I going? So it makes you wonder about heaven and uh, hell. That presupposes a duality of good and evil. You know, it gets us back to the idea of separate opposing entities. You know where I go with that. But this Bible guy I know says you're going to hell. Maybe he's right. Got my test results back. Laryngeal cancer. Jesus, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you could do me a favor and, uh, you know, what's the term? Whack me? <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like... I, I, I can see maybe why this season 6A was a bit polarizing in terms of, like, they're using this period in the hospital obviously to explore this existential crisis tony's having you know all these questions about life he's pondering a lot of a lot of questions the characters are having and using the characters in the hospital like the minor characters who have different perceptions on life as well you have the reverend you have the physicist uh is it the physicist here or the scientist in the other room um and it's just interesting but i feel like who wouldn't ponder their life experience after um something like that you even saw chris in from where to eternity he obviously had those um dreams in his coma uh, and then paulie got freaking paranoid about that too so um we're just delving deep into it here with tony because obviously he's the main um protagonist of the show and yeah i i understand why they took this direction it's because it's a period of recovery for tony he has to stay in the hospital and what are we going to do um it's just the writing direction they decided to chase uh, to, to to go down with so I can understand why um, people would have been, I guess, opposed to 6A or a bit, uh, why it has polarizing opinions, because I, I think it's a deviation from what the show was about initially. And I, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm liking it at the moment. I could be wrong, though. What, I'm going to wait for Vito? I don't want to have to think I dumped that guy. To build a jetty with what comes out. <laughs> Little Paulie tells me you didn't go to your aunt's funeral. And I tell you something else. I'm done with Nochi. Four G's a month for that nice and home? Fuck that. <laughs> the around the street? The way I see it, serves a right. What the fuck, Paulie? That woman loved you. She fed you. How many times she bailed you out of the can when you were a kid? Yeah, huh? she's just, just... Am I right? I'll tell you what really fries me. It's not Nochi. It's Dottie. I know to your way of thinking you didn't have a great mother. Oh! All well, I'm saying, Olivia, with all her faults, never abandoned you. For Christ's sake, Paul, you know what your problem is? You go around and pity for yourself. You think you got it bad. You're not stuck in some hospital room with fucking tubes coming out of you. You can eat food like a normal person. Hey, I never meant to trivialize your situation. But you gotta get beyond this petty bullshit, Paulie. You're part of something bigger. Where are you going to learn that? Why is Bobby looking like that? Is this guy going to get clowned now for getting shot in the ass? Not in the fleshy part of the thigh? Listen, Tone. That package... From Vito and Paulie, I have to believe that there was more there. Sure. So? Vito, especially, is somebody you should watch. Thank you, Carmela. You know what? Mr. Soprano? Hey, you know what happened to Marcus Burnett when he got shot in the ass in Bad Boys 2? He was clowned, okay? He was clowned. He couldn't get an erection. <laughs> <laughs> remember the scene? Hey, big up Joe Politano as well as the captain, yeah? Remember? R.O.P. R.O.P. Ralphie. He's like, in his house, Mike, I got an erection. <laughs> Mr. Soprano. Ah, the bird of prey. 
Okay. Um, it looks here like your last drainage tube is coming out today. Dr. Plepler says that you are stable and the pain is manageable. So that's good news. Your husband's coming home. This girl oh, just sure wants him ready. out. She give a shit. She's trying to save a buck. Thank you. Hold on a minute. Guy next door, Mr. Schwinn. Had surgery this morning. Cancer. You know anything about it? I heard they removed his larynx. This girl, the, what, what, I know it's all for the insurance stuff, but like, come on, man. Oh, Razor Scooters. No way. That's a throwback. I, I made you some stuffed zucchini. You can't eat that. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, stuffed zucchini. That's, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, they were beautiful. But thank you. Jace told me about the conversation you had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can only imagine how upset you must be. Well, it is a very unfortunate situation. Jason just doesn't understand how the business works. That's for sure. No, it's not his fault. It's my fault. Dick and I purposely kept him in the dark. Blame me, not him. You're not involved in this, Helen. I, I was too wrapped up in my own grief. I didn't realize. He's my boy, Tony. He's my baby. It'd kill me if anything happened to him. What are you talking about? Tony, please. You have a son. I'm begging you. Uh, honey, believe me, nothing's gonna happen to him. I'm his mother, Tony. I love him. If anyone has to pay for this, let it be me. How many times are I gonna tell you? It's gonna be fine. But Tony, do I have your word? Paulie couldn't handle it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got my word. Yeah, you don't have New York's word, though. Especially good week this week. <laughs> Good. I know how good you feel. I was only in the hospital one night. I couldn't wait to get out. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... You wanna go in, say goodbye? He was such a good minor character. It was a short appearance, but it's a memorable one. Yep, give him the two G's, baby. I want to make sure you had this before you checked out. Whoa, whoa, not here. It's all right. Let's go. Let's go. Strategy. <laughs> Almost an entirely new world. <laughs> supposed to be dead. Now I'm alive. The luckiest guy in the whole world. <laughs> Snap to this. From now on, every day is a gift. Yeah. Live for today. <laughs> Leotardo is here to see you. Wait yes. ten minutes. You're supposed to be resting. Hey, Blondie. It's all you, you know. The reason I'm back here. And matter. And matter. By any means. Thank you for saying that. Has she said she loves him ever since he awoken? Anthony. Hey. Ah, uh, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting. Kanye doesn't want another unfortunate incident. He's willing to let you keep your paycheck and your W-2 for 10 years. To replace the skim, he'll jack up your share of the sale price to 12%. No more skim. Truth be told, it's enough garbage for everybody. Does that mean we got a deal? Yeah, we got a deal. <laughs> you gotta keep the peace. <laughs> you gotta keep the peace. And play the rock music so nobody hears the conversations. And case there's a wire as well. <laughs> like like the lamp. Hey, 
Hey, that's that wind carrying Tony. That's that wind carrying Tony. <laughs> Remember the, the line about, or like the poster note about pity and then the wind carrying him. And then the waves in the pool. Remember the, the physician talking about the tornadoes and the winds and the waves. <laughs> the ripples. <laughs> I just need the ducks to come back. There we go. David Chase's panning shots of the trees. Every time I see that, those panning shots of the trees, I just think of aid. What seamless transition there to Jace. Why do I feel like something's going to happen to him? Oh, his knees. Poorly. Guess what, fucking mama's boy? You're kicking up four grand to me every month. I don't care if you're in Deer Valley or Death Valley. Four grand every goddamn month. And if you ever mention a word of this to Tony, I'll stick this up your ranch and pull a trigger till the bullets come out your eye. Selfishness, selfish, poorly, man. Transition back to Tony or dissolve to black? Damn. <laughs> hey, we heating up, baby. And it, it seems like, okay, at the moment, things are under control. There seems the peace is kept with New York at the moment. But you just know with this show, shit is going to hit the fan eventually. Now, I'm interested to see the direction they take now that Tony's out. Like, we still got a lot of Sopranos left, baby. We got more, like, more than, like, a season's worth of Sopranos left. We got about 17 episodes to go and i'm interested to see where they take the story because there's so much um like i said episodes left i'm just thinking to myself where are they gonna go now where are they gonna go with the characters what problems are going to arise now but it's the sopranos you don't know what's gonna be thrown at you from episode to episode ladies and gentlemen you don't know what bombshells are gonna be um like i said thrown at you you don't know what curveballs are gonna be thrown at you so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see where they go from now anyway guys i hope you guys enjoyed my reaction as always been your boy Lee moses take care god bless peace